Disney's bedtime favorites, Monsters, Inc., The Spooky Sleepover. It was a quiet morning at Monsters, Inc., and James P. Sullivan, also known as Sully, was catching up on paperwork. He smiled as he reviewed the monthly laugh reports. At Monsters, Inc., it was the monster's job to go to the human world and make kids laugh. The laughs were used as energy for the city of Monstropolis. It had been Sully's idea, and now he was president of Monsters, Inc. He was glad everything was going so well. Suddenly, the phone rang. Hello? said Sully. It's dispatch, said the voice on the other end of the line. Annual slumber party at Little Shannon Brown's house. Waxford is out sick. We need a replacement. I'll get right on it, replied Sully. He knew that there would be lots of kids at the party, and he wanted to make sure he had a monster there to tell jokes and capture laughs. Sully thought about who to send. He wanted to put his best monster on the case. He smiled to himself. Who better for the job than his one-eyed pal, Mike Wazowski? Mike was Monsters, Inc.'s top laugh collector. He could make anyone laugh. Sully knew his best friend would be perfect for the job. Mike was in the locker room getting ready for work. He had just finished putting in his contact lens, which was the size of a pizza, when Sully walked in. Sully explained the situation. I'm your man, Mike said confidently. Great, Sully exclaimed. Whistling, he went back to his office to finish his laugh reports. Piece of cake, Mike said as a door slid into his station on the laugh floor. One joke and I'll collect enough energy for the year. Then Mike opened the door and walked through the closet in Shannon Brown's room. It was empty. Uh, hello, Mike called. He looked around the room. He peeked under the bed, but there was no one there. Some party, he thought. I wonder where everyone is. Maybe I should go back. Just as Mike started walking toward the closet, he heard the sound of laughter. All right, now we are in business, Mike exclaimed. Kids, prepare to laugh. Just then, thunder cracked across the sky and a flash of lightning lit up the dark room. Mike jumped. If there was one thing he didn't like, it was a thunderstorm. I'm okay. I'm fine, Mike shouted. Then he ran to the closet door to return to the factory. Mike jiggled the doorknob, but it just opened... It just opened into the closet, not the laugh floor at the Monsters, Inc. There was no way out. Mike soon realized that lightning must have struck the door and broken it. Don't panic, don't panic, he told himself, his voice shaking. He knew he had to find the slumber party and another closet door fast. Otherwise, who knew how long he'd be stuck here? Mike took a deep breath and headed into the dark hallway. He was sure he heard laughter coming from somewhere. Now, all he had to do was find it. As he started walking, the floor made a noise beneath him. Creak! Halfway down the hallway, Mike stopped and looked around. There were some paintings on the wall that looked very creepy. They gave Mike goosebumps. He was pretty sure the people in the paintings were staring right at him. I've got to get out of here, Mike muttered to himself as he continued down the hallway. Then he saw something and froze. Mike couldn't believe his eye. Sitting at the end of the hall was a large furry creature with fangs. He was panting heavily. Oh man, he cried. Am I ever glad to see a fellow monster around here? Taking a deep breath, Mike started to walk closer to the creature. Just as he did, the creature knocked him down. Ah! Mike screamed. Dog breath! Mike hated dogs. He pushed the dog off him and ran as fast as he could into a nearby room. He slammed the door shut. He was safe. For now. Meanwhile, back at Monsters, Inc., Sully was working on the left floor. The floor manager came running over. Sully! Sully! he shouted. Mike still hasn't returned from the slumber party. He's never been gone this long. When Sully went to check on the door, he discovered it wasn't working. That meant Mike was trapped in Shannon Brown's house. "Uh Uh-oh, said Sully. We've got to get Mike out of that closet. I can't believe he's stuck. 
Sully brought in a maintenance crew to figure out how to fix the door. Together, the monsters pulled all the levers and pushed all the buttons on the door to try and get it to open properly. When that didn't work, Sully read the emergency manuals. He and the other monsters tried everything they could. After a few hours, the door made a clicking sound. It was working! Now, it would open into a different room at Shannon's house. The monsters cheered. Back in the house, Mike walked into the bathroom. Ouch! The green monster squealed as he tripped on a yellow rubber ducky and went rolling across the floor. Finally, Mike crashed into the wall and stopped. Then he heard a lot of giggling from down the hall. Mike did not like this assignment or this house, but he was determined to find the party. So he lifted himself off the floor and followed the laughter. But when he found the right door and opened it, it was quiet. Slowly, Mike entered the dark, silent room. All of a sudden, a light went on. Mike jumped. Shannon Brown and all her friends started roaring with laughter. They thought Mike looked funny sneaking into the room. Ah! Mike was so frightened that he couldn't stop yelling. At that exact moment, the closet door opened and Sully burst into the room. When he heard Mike, he started screaming too. Then he and Mike jumped toward each other and huddled together. The girls at the slumber party laughed and laughed. A big blue monster with purple spots hugging a one-eyed little green monster was one of the funniest things they had ever seen. Mike and Sully looked at each other and smiled. Then Mike jumped to the floor and they both took a bow. The kids cheered. Looks as if our work here is done, Sully said. He and Mike headed through the closet door and back to the monster's ink, laugh floor. They had filled so many canisters with laughs that Mike was named the top laugh collector that day. I was never scared for a second, said Mike, hoping Sully would believe him. Me neither, buddy, Sully replied, his big furry fingers crossed behind his back. Me either.